Okay, uh, today we're going to show you how uh, easy it is to install a water stub up on an existing deck uh, using just a uh, common garden hose. And uh, we're also going to show you how to core a hole into the deck. Okay, um, one of the first things we want to do is to uh, connect our plumbing for the uh, stub up to the uh, return line to the pool from the uh, pool filter. Um, it's also a good idea to place a three-way valve uh, between the new plumbing and the filter on the return line. As uh, you can see, this pool already has a, a three-way valve installed, so uh, in this case we're just going to connect our new plumbing uh, directly uh, to the uh, pool uh, return line here. Next, as you can see, uh, we trenched along the wall and then we uh, trenched over to here to uh, where we're going to stub up. Uh, we then laid in and uh, plumbed our PVC pipe, and it was uh, simple and relatively easy to do. Okay, um, in order to dig under the deck, we will want what we call a uh, water wand. Um, in order to construct the uh, water wand, you should use a uh, PVC pipe, the uh, same diameter as the pipe for the stub up. In this case, it's uh, one inch. The length of the wand should be oh, slightly longer than the distance you need to dig. On uh, both ends, though, we're going to uh, glue on a slip fitting, then uh, screw in a hose adapter. On the uh, business end, uh, we're going to have a uh, brass nozzle to dig with, and uh, on the back end here, uh, we're going to have an adapter allowing us to uh, attach a hose. It's uh, simple, but it's, uh, it's effective. Okay, um, some people use a, a sleeve over the water wand to help control the uh, erosion under the deck or uh, to ensure a sufficiently wide tunnel. Uh, if you do, uh, cut a length of a wider PVC of sufficient length for the job. What we have here is uh, two inches for the sleeve. All you have to do is assert the uh, water wand inside till the nozzle sticks out on the other end a little bit and then uh, feed them both up under the deck at the same time. Okay, what we have here is a shallow trench that we dug and it points directly toward where we will uh, core the deck. Now, this trench allows us to keep our water wand level with the bottom of the deck and to catch or direct the overflow water. Okay, this is an older pool and the uh, bond beam is approximately 12 inches wide. Sometimes uh, plumbing is run within or just behind the bond beam, so the outside edge of our core hole is going to be about 14 inches back from the edge of the pool. And we're doing that uh, in order to avoid the plumbing, if there's any. Also, we're going to core slowly and then tap out the core so we don't just burst through and uh, possibly hit plumbing. Uh, what we are using here is a 3-inch drill made especially for coring. Uh, don't worry if you don't have one or can't rent one. We're also going to show you how you can uh, core a nice hole with a quarter inch masonry bit and a good hammer drill. Okay, uh, here's how you can core a hole with a hammer drill and a masonry bit. Um, first, get something that's the approximate size of the hole you need to core, in this case a styrofoam cup, and a good marker. Then uh, mark a circle onto the deck and uh, it should look something like that. Okay, if you don't have a uh, core drill, then you're going to need to get a good hammer drill like this one and a quarter inch masonry bit. If you don't have a good hammer drill, you can usually rent them from places like Home Depot. Several things you should keep in mind. Wear good safety glasses, drill straight down as best you can, stop and pull up once you feel the bit pass through the concrete. We do this in order to eliminate hitting any plumbing that might be buried below. Okay, the idea is to drill holes around the entire perimeter of the circle as close as possible, but not so close that the drill bit tries to jump over into the adjoining hole, like this.
Okay, this is what our hole looks like after drilling completely around the perimeter. Okay, you will also need a good sledgehammer and possibly a one inch chisel, not a wood chisel. Get one like the one we're going to show you here and a shop vac. First, whack the center of the hole with the sledgehammer and see if the core breaks free. If it does, just pull it out. If not, drill as many additional holes as you can to the center of the core. This will weaken the core. Then, start using a chisel to break out the core like this. As you can see, our core did not break free, but in a short time, we had our core removed. Hang on. Okay, it also helps to have a shop back handy so you can get down in the hole and suck all that debris out of there. Makes the uh, chipping go a little bit uh, quicker and easier. Okay, uh, we're ready to use the water wand. Before we do, here's a little tip. Put a piece of pipe in the core hole. Uh, this allows you to uh, easily side on it and then direct the water wand directly toward it. Okay, let's start using that water wand. Now you might also find it handy to bring a shop vac with you or a little sump pump. The shop vac will help you clean out the uh, core hole for uh, dirt and uh, water if you need to. And a little sump pump would help to uh, drain your little ditch out if it doesn't drain out naturally. There we go. Okay, we were successful in digging directly to the core hole. Uh, but in case you hit an obstruction, you can always take a piece of black gas pipe and a sledgehammer and tap on it to get past an obstruction. Here we primered and glued a 90 degree fitting on the end of our PVC pipe. And uh, then we're going to uh, slip it up to the core hole. Uh, here's a little tip. It helps to stuff a small rag or some product packing material into the end of the 90 to keep uh, the dirt out. Okay, here we're looking straight down into the core hole and uh, that's the 90 down there. We are going to reach down, primer the 90, then we're going to primer and glue the upright for the stub up and then press it into the 90. Here's a tip, once the glue dries and before you hook up the product to the stub up, turn on the pool pump for a moment to clear any dirt from the stub up. Okay, here's another tip. Uh, you may want to uh, backfill the tunnel under the deck uh, with some good soil to eliminate any hollow spots. And uh, remember, the size of the stub up should be relative to the product that you're installing on the deck. You can always refer to the installation manual for the uh, suggested size stub up for uh, your product. Okay, here's a waterfall running from our stub up. And uh, here's a T7 diving board running from our stub up. And uh, finally, here's a G4 slide running from our stub up. You know, looking good. And uh, that's how we install a stub up onto an existing deck.